further and realized that Adolf Hitler was also a member of the occult order and uh, ran out Freemasonry because he didn't want any competing wizards, right? He ran out the Jews and the Gypsies to get rid of all competing wizards and adopted even the methodology of Freemasonry of having a knightly order. And, and most of uh, Freemasonry remained there, except for in open, right? It remained in essence and not in... And this would, be, this would be the, the, a lot of the magic that was uh, derived from, from the, um, again, you know, the Templars, which everybody knows about, you know, going into Jerusalem, but the, the Teutonic Knights were there as well. So this is, this is you know, um, the, the magic that was, that was coming down through the Teutonic Knights, through the Tool Society, and then to, um, to, to Adolf Hitler. Who designed the car of the people. The Volkswagen, right? Yeah, yeah. This was Hitler's dream to bring about uh, you know, full community transportation, or that's what they tell us, like they tell us things about Walt Disney. Well, what did he put on that Volkswagen? But a V and a V, right? And you look at it, it's two Vs interlaced. So you've got your 66, your excrement fallen angel symbol, but he crossed them, making a third V, making 666 out of the Volkswagen logo. When you look at the Phillips 66 logo, you'll see there's six points on the crest, making another coded 666 out of the 66, the fallen angels. So, all, all of a sudden, all these, these meanings and messages became very clear for me. And, and, the, and the fallen angels, you know, in, in, in the Bible would be what was referred to as, as the Nephilim, as opposed to the Rephium, which come from under the water. Exactly. You know how few people know about the Rephium. <laughs> Very few, none, yeah, and then they, they don't know what to think, though. I don't know, they're insane spirits under the water. Yeah, the horrible ones that come from below the ocean, I mean, it, it's the same thing as the, as the normal. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, um, John, Ones, Nomo, these are all the same thing, you know, mm -hmm. it's why, you know, John's the fisherman and... Right. Exactly, and then and that's that whole other story, the the John story, the Saint John, which I'm I'm not ready to take on yet, but uh, you know I've chased the Black Virgin, I've seen you know I I've read the tales, but I'm not ready to cover that one yet. Oh, no problem. Just, you know, <laughs> but it, it, it's just you know to, to indicate that these things are all really interconnected, and yeah, the Ionites, the Ovanes, uh, all of that, yeah, going right back to Nimrod. And, you know, and, and any time and any time you get you know um, any sort of religious movement, it's 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 automatically co-opted by the um, by the by the Brotherhood, if you like, uh, or you know by the secret societies, and and you know they're even not terribly particularly secret about you know their their co-opting of religions. You look at the Council of Nicaea, and they're like, oh yeah, we're just gonna throw away the Book of Enoch, and we're gonna throw away the Book of Noah, and we're gonna right, you know, yeah. And so then, what we have now are people like Aleister Crowley or John Dee, the military industri or, uh, intelligence agent working for Queen Elizabeth, uh, and channeling angels called Enochian magic. And Enoch is, is a major uh, player inside of the Masonic Lodge as well. And then when you realize the further connection, if we could bring it up to our exopolitical world, the very angel or alien visiting Billy Meyer in Switzerland, is now I'm Shemyaza, and Shemyaza is the lead uh, fallen angel that teaches sorcery and warfare to mankind. And she, being a she now, uh, in in Switzerland with Billy Meyer, this extraterrestrial known as a Pulajaran, uh, is aware of this and says, "Well, obviously I am not that Shemyaza. I'm a woman, right?" <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, here that's encoded in the Book of Enoch. That's the whole story, and this will even take you back to Alice Bailey and and more theosophical ideas of the hierarchical entities of aliens. And this story gets deep; it gets really deep. And you find that all of the esoteric arts are amount of channeling these consciousness or extra-dimensional entities into people's beings that can then communicate. Sometimes through channeling, or sometimes full possession, or sometimes just by you know, subtle movements. But we, we have begun to understand that there's way more to the story of civilization on planet Earth than what we think. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, when they, when they start to, to pull this, you know, shit about, um, 
And that's really what it is, folks, is shit. When they start to pull this shit about, we're, you know, the pinnacle of human civilization, and, well, in that case, how the fuck did they mine the stones for Baalbek? Just take exactly. Baalbek alone. Baalbek I mean, alone. That is such that's it. a flippin' mind-bender, you know? I mean, you know, given enough time, certainly not in the time period that it was created by the Egyptians, but given enough, given enough time, we would eventually be able to build a pyramid like that. We cannot even cut the stones for Baalbek. Exactly. You know, yeah. I, much less transport one, much less get it 16 feet up in a wall like that. I mean, you know, when you when you see the evidence for this, when you see the evidence of 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 the of the sheet of glass, you know, that's that's um, that's under the desert, you know, in the Middle East, and uh, you know, it predates it predates any atomic explosion, and nobody could figure out where this giant freaking sheet of glass came from, and then the first atomic bomb goes off, and wow, suddenly. We know where that sheet of glass came from. You know, it it, it it so indicates that we're being lied to. Yeah. And you know, it's it's so funny because you see modern archaeologists, you know, who've who've been given a a mainstream education, and it's like they just put blinkers on. It's like, oh, well, we don't we don't take into account that that the anti kytheria device, and, and we don't take into account those balls that they found in a freaking coal mine in Africa that are so perfectly balanced that NASA can't make one that's better balanced, you know, and these things have got perfectly symmetrical grooves around them you know, that are absolutely perfectly placed so that they don't interfere with the balance of it, and you know, we're trying to figure out where the hell these things, how they ended up in a, in a coal bed, you know, thousands of feet down. And, 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 and yet the archaeologists are going, well, we don't take that into account because it messes up our whole theory. Well, you know, it, it, it's like, you know, it's like them working on, on the expansion of the universe without taking into account the part that contracts. Right. Well, I, if I could jump in ar archaeology real quick. Uh, I did go to Kansas University for ancient architecture, and so they, they taught me these very things in ancient architectural school. You know, in the university, they'll tell you that the pyramid datings is false, and it was Colonel Weiss, who was a Freemason, trying to make a name for himself. They'll tell you that we can't move the stones for Baalbek, Lebanon. They showed me all of this in architectural school, but yet it's not in the public eye. And you still see all of the dating to 3500 BC to Khufu for the pyramids when they know that's a fraud. It was an absolute fraud, and yet they continue to perpetrate that myth. But we'll realize this at this very moment, okay? Uh, it's what, October 26th or something like that? On October 10th, Zahi Hawass, the uh, Grand General Secretary of the Giza Plateau, also known as the uh, head of Egyptian culture, is the one standing in between everyone in these revelations. So all of these now, I did witness and have in my film Zahi Hawass announcing finding the tomb of Osiris with Maury Povich. Oh god, it's so funny. It's so poor Maury. <laughs> and he announces this, that it's deep down in the earth we found this this shaft that is the tomb of Osiris, straight from Zahi's own mouth, right? This is the tomb of Osiris. And he says, you see behind me are all of these tunnels, and we do not know where they go. So the, the subterranean plaza all under the Giza Plateau, he's announcing this with Maury Povich, who did not return to the crypt, by the way. It was, oh my Anyway, uh, so Zahi Hawass then um, is this man that stands in, in the middle saying that, no, the pyramids were built by, by levers and, and rope and, and discounts any ideas of ancient civilizations or ancient gods or E.T. Yet, just two weeks ago, he was at the Association for Research and, and Enlightenment the uh, group founded and started by Edgar Casey followers in a massive conference about Atlantis. Now, it was actually the ARE that funded Zahi Hawass's Egyptol Egyptological studies. Uh, it was the ARE that paid his University of Pennsylvania schooling to, to become the lead Egyptologist. And, and should we also point out, University of Pennsylvania is one of two places that teaches uh, Kineaform, one of two places that, that is a university for English-speaking students. I should, I should point this out, that you can go to Oxford 
or you can go to University of Pennsylvania if you want to learn cuneiform and you're an English speaker. That's it. Right. So and 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 the and the prerequisite for uh, learning at Oxford is um, fluent German and French because a lot of the texts are still in German and French. Right. So I mean, these languages, the the Hebrew, the cuneiform, these these languages themselves are a closely guarded secret in a way because they're just so few places where you can go to learn this information, and then often when you go to learn it, you're 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 learning you know something that's that's been tweaked to a slight untruth. Slightly tweaked, yes. Yeah, uh, and there's no doubts about what Zechariah Sitchin shows you. What you can see that the cuneiform structure looks like a rocket departing, and you know uh, the the very language and everything looks like it. I've been to the Georgia Guidestones where they have all the different languages. Uh, uh, it was interesting that they chose like Swahili. I, I thought that rare. Um, but they also have cuneiform and, and Egypt uh, hieroglyphs. And, but you can see that in language, language is frequency. And you can see that the Chinese only takes up about two-thirds of the block, whereas the English takes up the whole block. You know, and you can get your concepts and you start to see how the word masters, the ones that have designed our very language, are the ones that are creating our reality. And simple things like when, well, I believe Sir Francis Bacon, in the writing of the King James Bible, uh, changed very simply the word from congregation to church. The word from, um, you know, the word from young maid to virgin. Ah, yeah, young girl, you know, I mean, well, the big difference between a young girl and a virgin. Exactly, or a congregation putting all the emphasis on the people gathering as opposed to the word church. Or, or, even, puts, just, or even just the removal of the pluralizations. Elohim right. is plural. Sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you see this, and I was discussing with um, Ben Stork the other day, um, the fact that Hebrew and um, Assyrian and some of the older Semitic languages some of the first languages are cymatic languages. Right. So that the sounds in the language create particular cymatic vibrations and that English is, is actually atonal and it's, it's actually a cymatic, a cymatic deconstructive language as opposed to a cymatically constructive right. language. Right, exactly. Our, our, our language is you know, 180 degrees from the true divine language that we could be uttering. You know, and, and and when you when you look at how cymatics work, you can understand why, why you know the Bible talks about the word mm -hmm. of God. Yeah, exactly, and then you know, was the logos, yeah. And uh, and and of course, you know, when one changes the word of God, one changes the meaning as well, and it changes not just that, but it changes the physical structure. Right. And, and take a word like absolute. And we look at that and we think of absolute, which means the all-encompassing, right? But then you break it down and you realize that what you have is Ab, Father in Hebrew, Sol, which is Son, and Uta, which is the Sumerian form of Horus, or uh, uh, Tammuz. So Uta was the original form, U-U-T-E. So absolute is that uh, father, son, uh, child. And this is mathematically explained through the 47th proposition of Euclid, which then is your Masonic code, if you wear the, the, the sign of the cubes. You know, you have a square with the, the right angled and another one. And this symbolizes Isis, Horus, and Ho or Isis Osiris, and Horus. Well, it's, it's amazing, you know, how much of this, this information that, that was available has been pulled out of circulation. This is why the dictionary is no longer this big, right? <laughs> like, yeah. you control the words, you control the concepts, you control right. what people can think. Orwellian Newspeak. And you can introduce this Orwellian Newspeak. Webster was a leading Freemason that wanted to even encode the ideas that the Bible used in using number codes and using uh, word codes that would lead you from one thing to another. And people don't realize that, that when, this, when this was put together, people like Tolkien were involved in sure. the writing of the definitions right. for what the words mean. You know, Tolkien, who wrote The Lord of the Rings, yes. Saturn, El, Bilal, Bell. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you, this, is, this is all about, you know, a deity. And, uh, and, and the Lord of the Rings was not a benevolent deity in his book, was it? 
No, it's not. Not, not at and, all. You know, and we can take it to the Sauron, and you're back to the reptiles. It's serious. Thing. 